All right, Maxim, if you wouldn't mind um, going to the next slide here so we can just go through the ground rules. All right, so welcome everyone to this on point uh, being hosted by the process measurement and control division uh, and presented to us today by uh, Maxim, our, our expert for today. Um, it's a pleasure to have you all here. Um, just so you know, this is being recorded. That's going to include um, the Q&A session after Maxim's presentation. Uh, and the intention with that recording is actually that we can go ahead and distribute it to the rest of ISA. So if you have, you know, a local section that you're part of, you're looking for a, a meeting topic, you can actually use this recording in your meeting, you know, present it to your group and, and have your own discussion about it. Um, so as I mentioned, there's going to be a Q&A following this presentation. Um, if you have questions throughout the presentation, please either hold on to them or if you're really excited and you need to get them out, um, go ahead and type them in the chat. Um, but please do stay muted and keep your uh, camera off during the actual presentation. Uh, and with that, um, if you do have any questions about just the on point itself, feel free to drop those in the chat as well. I'm not trying to address them. But otherwise, uh, let's turn it over to Maxim. All right. Hi, guys. Uh, thank you for coming here. Uh, my name is Maxim Lachance. I'm a process control engineer with uh, more than 20 years and um, currently employed at BBA. Uh, for this presentation, um, here's a few points. I, I'll do a little um, uh, look back at the intro to loop tuning that was done uh, maybe a month ago, uh, and we'll see what was done. It was like quick tips, and I will explain then what we should go uh, from there. What is really optimized tuning? How you know if you're really optimized? What type of response you you want? We'll look at the type of processes down there uh, that we have, and we'll work on um, process model integration. So we show you how um, knowing how the process will behave, how you can calculate optimum tuning. So I will show you tuning methodology. I will give you like uh, easy formula you can use to uh, choose the type of response you want from your process. Then I'll show you how it looks in uh, live simulators. And we'll do a short conclusion with uh, a few takeaways from uh, what's being presented. So in the previous presentation by uh, by Bryce, um, he explained like PID. So I'm not going to go over that again. Uh, there's a recording uh, available if you want to look at that. Uh, the link is uh, right there uh, below. Um, you can look at the impact of what's happening with the, the proportional gain, the internet game, and the derivative of the of the behave. Kind of the takeaway from that presentation was some uh, good quick tuning uh, tips. So, for example, uh, I'll focus today on uh, a flow loop, which is a, an easy loop, but it's good and, and fast to understand the uh, the behavior. So, uh, Bryce uh, gave us kind of a default tuning, 0.5 of uh, the the gain and uh, integral uh, reset time of 10 seconds per repeat. So, uh, I'll show you um, how those uh, tuning works. Uh, he also went a little bit uh, further, uh, close to process model notification, but again, uh, he, he kept it uh, a bit simple. Uh, what he showed us is you can do a bump test in manual. So it's what, uh, you take your, your loop in manual, so the, the PID controller is no longer acting, and then you force an output change. Uh, and then based on the ratio of the output uh, over the PV, so if your output moved, like in this example, by 60%, but your uh, PV changed by 14%, uh, you can set your gain like that. And then you would look at the uh, settling time. So the time your PV uh, went from stable to stable again, you multiply it by two, and then you can apply your uh, integral time uh, with this. So those are, are great tools, okay? So if you don't know where to start, like the 0.5 and 10 seconds, or if you, you did a, a bump test, you can apply it to those. And here, uh, I put those rules in uh, flow simulation loops that we have. So uh, what you have uh, on the right is a simple flow simulation. So you have a, a header with a, a pressure that you can change. Uh, I kept it fixed. Uh, you have all your flow meter and a control valve. And then you can uh, choose and put any types of uh, PIDs and, and gains that you want. So I did apply on the left the default 0.5 uh, gain for your proportional and 10 seconds for your integral time. And you can see the response to a set point change. So the, this blue kind of square is your set point. You can see here your PV uh, reaching the set point. And below is your controller output. So you can see how actually your valve works. So uh, actually, you have your proportional and then proportional and PI 
um, uh, working together. Same here with this other formulas uh, with the gains uh, and settling time, and you can see the type of uh, response that you have. Okay, so of course the response may change a little bit uh, if I add a different process, but what you can see here is those tunings will not give you issue, right? So you have a kind of a smooth response, I called it. Uh, there's no overshoot of your set point. It's somehow kind of a robust uh, tuning. So I'll talk about robustness a bit later, but robustness is the ability for your tuning to uh, remain stable and adequate, even though your process change a bit. Uh, if your uh, pressure, for example, here would increase, you don't want to become un unstable because your uh, your your response is a little bit faster. So this is great, good good starting point, but uh, is it optimized, right? So what is really optimize optimization when you talk about tuning and uh, what you uh, what you want to get? So there's three types of response that you may want to get from your uh, from your tuning, okay? Uh, there's the aggressive response, okay, here in red. And you can see on the left is the response of your PV for a set point change, and on the right, on a load change, okay? I'll focus a little bit more on the set point change, but there's a lot of processes out there that you never change the set point. It, it's not true that you, you keep changing the, let's say, the temperature set point or the pressure set point. Usually you want to maintain a pressure, but you want to react to disturbance. So you're trying to maintain a pressure on a header, but then suddenly a client request a lot of steam, right? So your pressure tends to uh, to drop. So you wanna see how quickly you can recover from those disturbance, from those loads change. So the aggressive response will go fast. Uh, it will reach the set point fast, but it will overshoot it. So you can see that it overshoots the set point. It somehow oscillates. You may have heard this as the ziegler nichols tuning will have that type of response, or they call that four to one. So the, the amplitude of the oscillation reduced from two to one and reduced. So this is the aggressive tuning. So this is what you may want to have if you don't care about the overshoot and you want to reach your set point faster. Uh, there's what we call the uh, compromise. Uh, it's the black one. So compromise is a small overshoot. So still reach your set point fast, but not as much disturbance. So you will overshoot a little bit, but you will not undershoot. And then there's the sluggish. Uh, it's the blue line, so there's no overshoot. So you really reach your set point uh, without an overshoot in a smoother fashion. If you stay in the sluggish side, you're more robust, okay? You will be less sensitive to process change or condition change. So if you can, usually, and it depends on your process, we'll say if you can be sluggish, uh, well, be sluggish, because you'll have robustness, those loop will not create you uh, headache in the future. Uh, if you really, when you push it, sometimes you have to, then it, it may be sensitive. So you may have to retune and readjust based on uh, on different uh, different conditions. One thing I want to show you, and it's it's really interesting, is you can see that they all stabilize at the same time. Okay, and this st stabilization point, uh, I'll show you a bit later, but it's always around ten times the dead time. Okay, so if you have a flu loop with a dead time of one second, and when I talk at dead time is I increase, let's say, my pump speed, it will take about one second for me to measure this change and this actually flow increase. This is the dead time. So uh, it's a good thing to know because it's a good uh, rule of thumb because if you have, uh, I'll take a temperature loop, which are, are known to be slow, where the dead time is five minutes, and then if the operator or anybody asks you, to see uh, why can you stabilize the loop in uh, 10 minutes? Well, it's, it's impossible. You will not be able to stabilize your loop faster than about 10 times the dead time. So if it was five minutes dead time, then it will be about 50 minutes, the fastest you can reach uh, your stable point. You can take different routes to reach that. You can be aggressive, you can use a compromise, but you always stabilize at the same time. So, this is the type of response you, you want to have. So you won't really know if you're optimized until you reach that, that kind of zone. Because if I go back, you can be as sluggish as you want. You can have a tuning so slow that it will stabilize like 100 times at that time. And that's possible. But the optimization range is the one that is shown here. So how you, you get there, right? The, those quick tuning tips are good for you know a smooth and stable response. So the best way to do that is to know how your process will uh, will respond. So if you can model the response of your process, 
then you can calculate your tuning. So that's why process model identification is key to be able to, uh, to do your tuning. So there's three types of processes, the self-regulating, non-regulating, integrating, and runaway. Runaway is usually chemical reaction, produce heat, more reaction occurs, and then it, it, it runs away. Uh, self-regulating is like a flow, temperature, pressure. You change conditions, so you go from stable to another stable, and that's the one we'll focus today. And then there's the non-self-regulating, uh, which we call integrating process, uh, like uh, usually it's levels in a tank. So you're adding flow, but you're pumping flow out. So if you change the equilibrium, well, it will not stabilize again. It will either deplete or, or, or fill up. Those are uh, not covered today, but other type of processes. So self-regulating is what you see here. You change your controller output, you go from stable to stable again. So how you can model this type of response, uh, you wanna model it with a first order plus, uh, plus that time. So uh, this is what you, you have when you do that. And you, when you do that, the test, it has to be in what we call an open loop. So you take your loop in manual. So the controller is not in the equation. So you're in manual, you, you keep your output at a fix, let's say a valve opening as a fix at point, and then you do a change, and then you will have the process response. And then there's three things you wanna, you need for your model. You need the dead time, you need the time constant, and you need the process gain. This is the three uh, key numbers that you need to uh, model your process response. So the time is very easy. I moved my, uh, my valve or I speed up my pump and then how much time it took before I see my PV response. This is your dead time. The process gain is kind of the ratio in percent uh, of your controller output based on your PV, okay? So your PV, uh, needs to be in percent. If it's not in percent, you can use this conversion here and use the, the range of your output and the range of your PV. If not, you can just put it in, in, in percent. So how it translates is like, I want to know if I move my, my uh, valve, let's say it's a valve by 10%, how much my process will respond. So if the response is strong, then I will have a, a, a bigger gain, a bigger process gain, meaning my tuning should be uh, a little bit smaller because it's already responding quite large. So if I move 10% and then my PV uh, move by 30%, it's a lot. The other way around is if I move by 10% and my PV only change by 2%, oh, it means I have a smaller process gain. It means my uh, my PID tuning will be, we need to be stronger to push it and, and be able to move it. So you take your Rate as simple as that ratio, the percent change of your PV. So from where it starts to there, how much percent in move compared to the percent your move your output. The time constant, uh, it's uh, basically it's how you calculate it. It's simple. You take the the full range of your change on your PV. And you look the time it took from the moment it moved to the moment it reached 63.2% of the change, okay? So if I move from zero to 100%, I'll make it very easy. I will look here, I will bring it to 63% and I will calculate how much it took to go from here to reach the 63% and that's your, your time constant. So we'll do a short example with, uh, with some data. Um, here it says on the left, my, I move my controller output from 70 to 64. So you see, I'm closing. So I made it on purpose that it's it, it's going down this time, but it's the same response. It's just like a mirror. Okay, so you can do it going up or going down. You don't have to be go up. And then my PV changed from 40 to 34 inches. Okay, so I made it on purpose that it's not percent, right? So you, re you always need to work in percent when you do your gain. So here I have the information that my transmitter span is zero to 50 inches, right? So I will first look at the dead time here. Okay, I move my valve at this, at this moment here, and then it took about two seconds to start moving. So I have my dead time, the first number I want. Then if I look at my process gain, which is the formula on the left, is the change of PV and percent. So I know I move here six inches, but I cannot put six here because I want it in percent. So six inches out of the span, how much percent is this? It's equal to 12%. So I know my PV moved by 12%. And then I will look the change in my CO. It was 
from 70 to 64. So I move by 6%. So I have a gain of 0.5, right? So a gain of 0.5, meaning that I, I will have um, half the response from, my, uh, from the change. Now, if I look at the time constant, I said it's 63.2% uh, of the total change. So I know I changed by six inches right here. So if I take 63.2, I need to move by 3.79, okay? So from the moment I was stable, I need to move by 3.79. So if it was like 40, then you subtract 3.79, and then you can know that the value you want here. And then you take the moment your PV start to change and the moment that it reached the 63% of the whole change, this is your time constant. So this is great. Now you have your dead time, you have your process gain and you have your time constant, okay? So you see simple maths to calculate this. You multiply, divide, uh, subtract. It's, it's pretty easy. It's not complex math. So you have your, 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 uh, your process model. This is good. You will use that for your tuning. There's a, in reality, my example was clear, right? There was a sharp transition. In reality, you may see uh, something like this, like not white as a, a clear cut, right? Those are higher uh, processes. As I said, I do a first order model response, but in reality, they are always higher model. We just do a first model representation because usually it's, 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 it's enough. Uh, to be able to reach good uh, good tuning. So you can see here that in blue, it's what I showed you, the clear transition. But what, what can you do when you have like a smooth transition like that? Like, how will you get your dead time? So should I start from here? Or should I go here? And what I do with my time's constant, right? So there's another way of calculating. They call it the two-point method. So if your, your transition, if your process is a bit noisy and it's not too clear where, where you're sitting here, so you can do this one. So it's just this transition, this mid transition is, is representative of the first model, the first order. What you see here is the higher order kind of playing a little bit with this transition. So by looking at the 28% mark, just like we did with the 63.2, you can get your time constant and your dead time like that. So it's really simple. You take the time that you move your output and the time it reached 63, and you calculate the time it reached 28. So you have those two times, and then you just do the small formula, 1.5 uh, multiplied by the difference of those two times. Then it gives you your time constant. So again, simple maths, but it's another way if you're uh, you're not sure of the, the transition with those higher order models. So enough said with those process model applications. So what you do with this, is, I guess this is what you want. So you can calculate your tuning with those three numbers, okay? If you want the aggressive response, and the aggressive response, um, remember, is the response where you overshoot and you kind of oscillate, right? And the moderate response is the small overshoot and the relax is no overshoot. So you just take this for your gain, your proportional gain, your integral time. So integral time, you see it's always the same three times the dead time. So it's same. So once you set your integral, you don't touch it. And for your aggressive tuning, you will take your time constant, divide by the multiplication of your process gain, multiply by the dead time. This will give you this type of response. Now, once you have this response, if you don't like it and you want to be moderate, you see you just divide by two. It's very simple. You take your gain that you have here, you divide it by two, and then you will get this response. You're still not satisfied, divide by two again, then you will have a relaxed, uh, your uh, relaxed tuning. So this is what we do for, for tuning, and I'll show you how I translate and how it works. So I will uh, soon open uh, the same flow simulation that we had uh, that we had before. Uh, just, um, that we had before. So uh, we can play with the pressure. We have our control valve. We can play with the tuning, go from auto to manual. And we will test those uh, those tunings. So I will not identify the model again. Uh, I model it. I did uh, just like what I show you. Did the bump test and calculate my three numbers. So I came up with a, a process gain of one, a time constant of two point five seconds, and a time delay of 0.625 seconds for this process model. Okay. So flow loop are usually pretty fast. You see a short time delay. 
uh, the time constant is usually the the time constant of the valve like the valve is is is, is not like instantaneous to move so that's the type of model so now if i go in my chart here and i apply those calculation and i calculate uh, my gain and my uh, integral time for aggressive moderate and relax i end up with those those tuning and we'll see how it looks so with this type of tuning aggressive i'm expecting this response with the moderate tuning i'm expecting a slight overshoot and with the relaxed tuning i, I should not have any uh, any overshoot so let's look at this uh, flow simulation so i will i will just start the flow simulation so what you have here on the left on the top uh in like the one that's moving a lot the blue is your process value with a bit of noise but it's just it's automatic zoom right so it's no zooming on small noise and I'm in automatic with a set point of 20 liters per minute so I'm okay and you can see my valve here is working a little bit based on the the current gain trying to maintain this 20. my pressure is stable I will look at the tuning um, if I look at my tuning value I already input the gain for that I calculated with the reset time. And I'm not using derivative. Huh? If, um, derivative, um, PI will do like for almost 90, 95% of the loop will be enough. Uh, you will need derivative for those higher order, like usually temperature. So if you're not in a slow uh, temperature loop, don't bother with, uh, with derivative gain. It will be sensitive to noise and it will cre create you more trouble and it will bring you no benefits in those types of, uh, of loops. So I set up my gains. I'm in automatic and I will try and test for a set point change. I will go to 25 and see the type of response I'm getting. Okay, so this is what I was expecting, like the four to one Ziegler Nichols type of response, overshoot, small solicitation, and I, I go back to stable. Okay, so if I'm not happy with this, as I said, it's pretty easy. Once you had your model and you set up your integral time, I keep the same uh, reset time, the same integral time, and I just cut into my gain. So I go from four to two. And then I will go back to 20, see what, what the type of response. You see, as expected, small overshoot. Uh, this is like the compromise. I go fast, but I accept that I will overshoot a little bit. And if I, I want to be a bit more conservative again, then it's pretty easy. I will go here and I will cut again my gain in two. I will go to one. And I will test it again, go back to 25. And I get a smooth response, no overshoot. Okay, I will pause the simulation. Okay, it's hard to see, but you see stabilizing about here, stabilizing about here, stabilizing about here. Just like I explained, you will reach stable about in about the same time, right? Regardless the, the route you, you, you take. And remember, it's 10 times the dead, the, the dead time, your stabilization uh, time. So you cannot do better, okay? So those fast loop, uh, usually there, we slow them down a little bit to get robustness. And I will show you what, what robustness is about soon. Uh, but um, it, it really helps you get away from the misconception for those slow loops that you could do better, okay? I've seen, uh, people look at it, uh, especially heating loop. How come like the, the heat is not maximum? I didn't reach my set point. I want to reach it. But why it's not maximum? Because if you if you would push it too hard, the process is so slow that you will have an extremely big overshoot. You need to slow down. You have no choice to slow down a little bit before. Mm -hmm. uh, and you cannot beat this kind of dynamic of 10, 10 times at that time. So I will talk about robustness. Okay. So sluggish is robust. Okay. And um, I will uh, keep my this tuning, and I will do I will change the pressure. I will go let's say to fifteen pressure. So if I have more pressure on my my header, of course I will have more process gain, right? And process gain meaning if I move my valve and there's more pressure, there will be more flow. There will be a higher flow change. Okay. 
So I will do the, uh, the process change. So you see, you can see, this is what we call the load uh, rejection, right? With those tunings, I added a disturbance in my system and this is how I react to control it, okay? Now let te let's test the performance with a higher pressure with a sluggish, like a robust tuning. So I will go to 20. See, slight overshoot, but not too bad, right? But my process gain change, right? I put, let's say, 50% more pressure, but I, I was still okay. It did not throw off my tuning. I don't have the exact same response as before, slight overshoot, but it did not create any issue. Now, if I had uh, an aggressive tuning, so I will go back to uh, the four. So the aggressive, like the first kind of Ziegler and Nichols that we had. And I will see how now my process will respond with this. So I will go back to 25. And you can see it's not a steady oscillation, but really like this disturbance, we start oscillating. Okay. So that's what I was explaining. If you don't have to be aggressive, well, don't be because if things change and things always change, you're running at 60% production rate and you increase, then the valve, the, the, the pipes get clogged, the product change, you're operating at different set point. There's a lot of things that will change and you will end up with this. So be just be mindful uh, of the type of response you want. And um, the more aggressive you are, the less robustness, because if things change, then you will be you will be affected by it. So this is the to conclude kind of the time scale uh, that summarizes a little bit what we see. So simple maths, you do your process, you get your model, then you, you can pick the tuning and choose the response the, the response that you want. For us, we put it right here, big in the middle. The process, the time is key in all this dynamic, okay? So once you have your dead time, you know a few things. Uh, I already talked about the, this one. 10 times the dead time is your stabilization time. So really good things to know. It gives you a quick idea of the dynamic that you want. Another very interesting that I didn't talk about, when you have an oscillating loop, Either it's the somebody else making that loop oscillate or it's your tuning, just like the one we saw that is, is, is not adequate, it's too aggressive, and you start oscillating based on tuning. So one quick uh, way to know, just by looking at the oscillation, if, if, if it's caused by the processes or by the uh, tuning, if you're oscillating at about four times the dead time, it's usually the tuning, okay? So when you will oscillate, you will oscillate uh, around four times the dead time. Your integral time, the limit is two times the dead time. We set it to three, if you remember. Uh, if you go around two, you will, you will start becoming unstable. And on the left is the derivative that it really could really cover, but it needs to be greater, uh, I mean, smaller than half of the dead time, and then filtering and sampling time. Okay, but remember those those quick uh, dot wikip, and that's how you uh, you're able to really know if you're optimized and choose the type of response uh, that you want. Because sometimes you sometimes you may have a loop that it's not causing you any issue, but it it may be a bit way too sluggish for what you need, and it may affect uh, the time it takes to reach your set point and starts production and create delays like that. That it, 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 you don't really see. So you will know if you're optimized once you, you reach that, um, that, um, that limit. So that was my presentation. Um, I didn't monitor the chat. I will take question now. We can go back in the simulator and, and try, try things out. And I'll, I'm ready for, for your question. I, I thank you.